They have it. Right. And that was Hooty and the Blowfish. You know, I actually heard that they are two-time Grammy Award winners, you know. Wow. And they have won multiple awards. It's amazing to hear some of the songs, actually. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Really so, giving me the, you know, old school right. rock, you yeah. know, 90s uh, Which vibe. Which is hard to get now. Very. Now it's all like... <laughs> TikTok songs, which yeah. is again a very, very fun song. So we're not going to judge any song. But something we will probably judge on is how much sugar do you take in a day? Now, as a Malaysian, exactly. uh, if you guys don't know, Malaysia is actually known as the sweetest nation in Asia. Correct. And that's not necessarily a good title for us being Malaysian. Yes, we're very I mean, sweet people. Yeah, we like that. Yes. You know, I, we love sweet things. Mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> we love being sweet. Exactly. But, you know, having a high glucose level is actually detrimental to your health. Mm -hmm. um, and But the good thing is that one in three Malaysians are trying to cut down on their sugar intake as well. So this is all according right. to the National Health and Morbidity, Morbidity Survey 2019. Mm -hmm. So that was in 2019. What about 2020? I'm pretty sure the numbers have gone up, Zoe. Yeah. I mean, there's, we're looking at sweets all around us, especially in this um, fasting month. We will definitely, you know, be craving mm -hmm. a lot. Um, I would... Definitely, you know, if I'm fasting, I fasted before, so I, I usually crave for cakes, sweets, yes. like the desserts are the main thing. And even if you go for buffets, yep. the desserts are the main place that you would be. Exactly. <laughs> the dessert selection has to be endless and amazing. Mwah, I love So today we're going to be discussing about, you know, diabetes during the fasting month, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how we are in the month of Ramadan. Uh, we also have our, you know, our guests here. So we'll be discussing about diabetes and Ramadan with Associate Prof. Dr. Noor Shafina Mohamad Noor, the consultant, paediatric endocrinologist and paediatrician uh, for UITM Private Specialist Centre, affiliation with Medical Faculty UITM. Yes. Hi, Doctor. Thank Hello. you so much for joining us today. How are you feeling, Doctor? Good, good. Thank you for having me, Erin and Zoe. Thank you. <laughs> thank you both. Thank you so much for coming. We want to know before we get into the topic, how has your Ramadan been so far? Yeah. Good, good. It has been good. Like you said, we're halfway there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so it's been good. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> so let's get into it, right? Uh, I mean, in Malaysia, like we said, even if you go to the bazaars, Correct. Uh, very rarely you see anybody selling mineral water. <laughs> it's always your right. Aibandung, <laughs> Aichinchao, Teh Tare, all the sweet, sweet type of drinks. But another and thing is, who actually looks for mineral water? Correct. <laughs> That's really good to look for <laughs> mineral water right? you know, after a long day of uh, fasting. Yeah. So in Malaysia, I want to know, if you do you have the current stats mm -hmm. of, you know, um, what's our current stat? statistics for uh, diabetics in Malaysia because uh, we have it's one in five so is it still one in five that's yes. well back in 2019 yeah. the survey yeah. was conducted yeah. so it is still one in five I mean of course we want to know the, the latest update so hopefully right. we're going to get that soon and uh, apart from diabetes uh, of course you know diabetes is, is associated with obesity mm -hmm. so we are one of the fattest nation in South um, Southeast Asia so we champion in that way uh, so we don't want to be champion in that way uh, so hopefully we're going to have to do something about it we don't want to be the first in the stats anyway mm -hmm. yeah yeah, so, not, not the kind of stats we want to be number yes. one in, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, talking about diabetes and Ramadan, I'm sure there are some of them who are actually not aware of this. And, you know, just going out, eating all the cakes and sweets that I want. Mm. So, you know, can you tell us uh, briefly, like, explain what actually is diabetes to some of our audiences? All right, okay. Thank you, Erin. Uh, so, diabetes, or what we call diabetes mellitus, uh, is, is a condition not just affecting adults, um, ideal with children. So, it does affect children as well. Mm -hmm. So, it causes your blood glucose level to be high higher than the normal range. Uh, in adults, type 2 diabe uh, diabetes, the, there are two main types of diabetes. One right. is type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. In adults, type 2 diabetes is the most common diabetes affecting adults population. Mm -hmm. However, in children, type 1 is the most common uh, diabetes affecting children and adolescents. However, right. having said that, type 2 diabetes is also on the rise because yep. of this rising prevalence of obesity. Right. So mm -hmm. that's why we pediatric are also seeing increasing trend in type 2 diabetes being diagnosed in children as well. Yeah. Uh, so let's, let's uh, talk, yeah, yeah, so it, that's yeah. worrying a trend. Right. Uh, so let's talk a bit briefly about what is, what is type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. Yeah, so I never understood this when they yeah. say, hey, you have type 1, type 2, I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a type 10, like I'm yeah. type 10 over 10. <laughs> but what is the difference between uh, these yeah. two? Yeah, so type 1 diabetes is when the patient doesn't have, uh, doesn't produce enough insulin in the body so we know insulin is responsible to bring down the 
sugar oh. level to the normal range. Mm -hmm. So we do. If you don't have enough uh, insulin level in your body, hence of course your blood sugar is going to run high, yeah. especially after you eat. So these patients of type one diabetes, especially children and adolescents, they will need supplementation with insulin injection to yeah. help them sustain the normal right. blood sugar mm -hmm. level. On the other hand, with type two diabetes, mm -hmm. they are still able to produce insulin. However, because of the uh, obesity, like we mentioned, overweight, like we mentioned, the body becomes less uh, sensitive mm -hmm. or uh, more resistant towards mm -hmm. these insulin hormones. Hence, the after effect is still the same. Your blood sugar level is run high. And of right. course, they would need treatment. Uh, treatment uh, includes uh, medication mm -hmm. uh, as well as insulin if they have to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a worrying thing. Like, mm -hmm. if you see um, people usually, you know, have this uh, stereotype like, oh, only people who are overweight are the ones who have yeah. diabetes. But it's actually not the case. Um, people who are actually, even I have friends, mm -hmm. uh, like some I've met from school, uh, high school, mm. um, they were quite skinny, but they were diagnosed with diabetes. Like, yeah. they have diabetes. Yeah. So yeah. it's actually like a thing that. Um, it doesn't affect it, your yeah. size, actually. Correct. It definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it Being goes Asian, that, right? because we're Asian, mm -hmm. of course, we cannot. We cannot choose our genes. <laughs> Being Asian is one of the risk factor for diabetes as well, unfortunately. Is it a um, like a generation? Like, is, does it pass on by generation? By it, generation? it can, especially with type two diabetes. Mm -hmm. If you ask a patient with type two diabetics, of course they say their grandparents are diabetic. Their parents are diabetic. Yeah, so okay. with type 2 diabetes, yes. But with type 1 diabetes, if you don't have anyone in the family with diabetes, you can still get type 1 diabetes. Wow. I think it's important, uh, you know, to diagnose diabetes yep. is where you get all your medical checkup, your yes, early medical yes, checkup. That's yes. where you actually know, yeah. you know, Consult how you're doctors, doing. Yeah. Exactly, you know, exactly. your outside might look perfect, but inside, you don't know how you're doing. Exactly. You know? <laughs> I mean, case in point, Nick Jonas, if mm -hmm. you guys know, he was yes, he's a very yes, popular yes. celebrity that's known to have uh, diabe uh, diabetes and yeah, he is he has to, that one. Know, yeah. he has to shoot yeah. up uh, he has to actually take an insulin to break down the sugar in his body yeah. and I think that is uh, one of the few cases that I know there's a young celebrity who looks healthy who but is yes, skinny whereas yes. you know um, and they're leading normal yeah, life normal, yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah they're doing things you don't even know that they're, they're diabetics yeah. Yeah. yeah so we're gonna go into the symptoms of diabetes before we actually talk about how it correlates sure. to uh, Ramadan because uh, something interesting I think I was watching this video but not the doctor and she mentioned one of the first few things is that uh, you actually lose weight and you don't know whether or not you're losing weight through natural you know um, diet or through you know your sugar not be able, being able to break down so I want to actually understand the symptoms of uh, um, diabetes and how does one differentiate between having normal symptoms and these are diabetic symptoms? Yes. Uh, so interesting that you mentioned about the weight loss uh, because they do uh, have weight loss. That is one of the symptoms of diabetic. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why in our clinic, when patients, uh, because because I run the uh, obesity yep. clinic, so when they come with a weight loss, they say, I've lost weight, maybe two, three kilos. We'll be like, oh, that's good. But then, you know, I, I've or, um, uh, I, I always make a point to ask other symptoms of diabetes as well. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, they going to the toilet to pass urine more often? Are they becoming more thirsty mm -hmm. um, uh, than usual? Are they uh, tired more than usual? So those are the symptoms that you have to ask as well. Because mm -hmm. if you don't, you kind of say, you kind of just say, "Oh, that's good." If yeah. you, without asking other symptoms, you might miss that they have already becoming diabetic rather than they are losing weight because they yeah. are doing something about it. So that's why it's very important. And ch in children as well, it's important to ask whether, uh, let's say, you're dealing with a nine, ten year old, uh, they have been uh, dry by night, uh, and then suddenly mom came and said that, oh my, mm -hmm. my, my, uh, my child just passed urine in the middle of the night. So that's another uh, thing that you have mm -hmm. to make sure that is this one of the sign of diabetic as right. well. Yeah. Right, and you know, yeah. weight loss and all yeah. that. I'm sure we all want to achieve our ideal weight. You know, yeah. you might think that you know I'm losing weight. That's a good thing, isn't it? But it's not the case. That's yes. why having medical checkup is actually uh, doing your regular medical checkups is really really important. So, uh, Doctor, we're actually going to be moving into, since our topic is actually we're in the month of Ramadan, mm -hmm. we want to talk how uh, in di diabetes actually correlates, you know, for the month of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. So, is it advisable, you know, the first thing we want to know, is it advisable for people, you know, diabetic patients to be fasting 
for this month. All right, thank, thanks, Erin. Um, so as we know, um, ram fasting during Ramadan is one of the pillars for Muslims. Mm -hmm. um, so it is compulsory to fast for uh, healthy adults and healthy uh, adolescents mm -hmm. uh, after puberty. Uh, however, in Islam, uh, there are certain criteria, certain group of people who are exempted from fasting. Yeah. Uh, in whom, when, uh, for example, those with chronic illnesses, for mm -hmm. example, uh, uh, diabetes. Also unable. Yes. Yeah, right. uh, in whom, when they fast, that can be detrimental to yeah, their health. Their health. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, however, having said that, most of our patients, uh, my patients, and most of diabetics out there prefer to fast like anyone else mm -hmm. um, uh, 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 out there. Uh, therefore, it's very important uh, for all diabetics to know what are the risks, what do they have to do yeah. before before and during fasting itself to ensure safe fasting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what are some of the precautions? Uh, I know you're not a dietitian, but some of the precautions mm -hmm. uh, for our audiences out there who are diabetic but still want to continue to fast. Uh, what are those some of the things they need to watch out for, yeah, or yeah. they need to check with their doctors, check with their dietitian before actually beginning a twelve-hour fast? Yeah. So I think maybe we can talk about what are the risks associated mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. fasting, uh, especially for our di diabetic patients. So uh, there are a few risks uh, that uh, patients with diabetes have to know. One of the uh, risks is of course being hypoglycemic, mm -hmm. or your you have sh low sugar level because you're fasting, you're not eating uh, anything for a few period of time. Uh, so that is one. And then the other thing is, of course, uh, dehydration, mm -hmm. um, especially those who are not having adequate uh, water intake yep. during the hours that they can uh, eat and drink. Uh, and also those with uh, poor uh, sh uh, diabetic control, because when you have poor diabetic control, you tend to uh, pass urine more and that also will increase your risk of being more dehydrated. Mm -hmm. um, apart from that, uh, what can happen to your blood sugar is also uh, uh, having hyperglycemia whereby your sugar is running high. So if your sugar is running high uh, for a period of time and you're not doing anything about it, what can happen is especially with those children, adolescent, uh, patients with type 1 diabetes, they can go into other complications, uh, what we call uh, diabetic ketoacidosis or DKA. Mm -hmm. DKA is one of the serious complications whereby uh, one of, among the symptoms they can be very uh, very lethargic, they can have uh, vomiting, mm -hmm. abdominal pain, they can have rapid breathing and this needs uh, attention, uh, urgent attention uh, right. in the in the uh, emergency department right. to prevent We're, further complications. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh you know, gosh, talking about scary, all that symptoms yeah. is really, really scary and nerve-wracking. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you never know um, people with diabetes. Sometimes you don't even know whether you have diabetes exactly, or not. I mean, exactly. even us, uh, Zoe, I mean, I would say, honestly, I've not really done a thorough, regular medical checkup. Check up. But this is something alarming and this is something that I would really consider to do uh, as soon as possible. Yeah. And uh, talk, uh, doctor, talking about all the risks mm -hmm. and all the symptoms, so, you know, diabetic patients who actually do fast during the Ramadan month, what actually should they be, like what are the steps they should be taking, mm -hmm. um, what are some of the precautions maybe they should be taking, like the food, if you can give some recommendations would be much yes, helpful. Yes, yes, sure. So, uh, uh, talking about fasting during Ramadan, mm -hmm. I mean people think that during the Ramadan, okay, I'll do something about it, but then it, it, it should go back to before Ramadan starts even, because okay. you know, to do something, we have to be, you, we have to be well prepared. Mm -hmm. right. So, uh, before the Ram month of Ramadan, then, of course, the the most ideal is uh, talk to your uh, consult your doctors, mm -hmm. consult your dietitians because you you want to prepare for this one whole month of uh, fasting. Yeah. So talk to them uh, in terms of getting advice, uh, talking about what are the risks, what you should do, should not do during the month of Ramadan because that's very important. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I would usually ask my patients to do is have a trial of a few days of fasting even before Ramadan starts then when you have you know when you practice mm -hmm. you kind like of know okay now I'm fasting <laughs> yeah I'm fasting how how does my sugar behave mm -hmm. what do I do uh, what are the uh, uh, adjustment to the medication the insulin injections that uh, I need to be de doing so that yeah. is even before the Ramadan start um, speaking on uh, 
during Ramadan, what do we have to do is, of course, uh, patients with di diabetes uh, should be checking their blood sugar more regular mm -hmm. uh, compared to before Ramadan right. because you want to know whether is my sugar uh, regular, uh, normal, am yeah. I going into hypo, am I going into hyperglycemia? Like food intake, yes, right. Right. the food okay. intake. So that's one thing. And whether what are the adjustment of the uh, uh, insulin that I have to be doing, and then that is very important. Uh, if you want, if you want to talk about um, uh, diets, uh, of course, it's very important in our daily life. Food yep. is very important. Healthy, balanced diet is important. Containing all the food groups. Uh, uh, aim for low glycemic index food. Mm -hmm. um, aim for high fiber diet, and also protein has to be there. Yep. And you mentioned about uh, Bazaar Ramadan, right? right? Uh, so, yes. <laughs> The the very already. dangerous. Yes, yes, yes. Yet very very tempting, appealing. Yeah. <laughs> so, what uh, I mean, like traditional uh, sweet foods is very famous uh, in Bazaar Ramadan yeah. during during Ramadan, mm -hmm. and also fried food. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like we're not saying that you cannot take those. You can, but of course, in moderation. Yeah. Yeah. So everything has to be in moderation, and plenty of water during the non-fasting hours mm -hmm. um, is also important as well. Right. To make sure that you hydrate, because I was actually going to ask you about uh, what. I do know from uh, you know watching videos, watching uh, dramas and movies, um, especially somebody who who is diabetic who has to make sure they take in the insulin, right? Um, do you have to take it in a uh, certain hour or, uh, or like certain time basis. time frame for you yeah. to take the insulin? How does that factor into somebody who is fasting? Yes. Um, uh, thanks, Zoe. So the the insulin, of course, need to be. Uh, adjusted mm -hmm. uh, during fasting months because during when, when we're not fasting we're eating during lunch time mm -hmm. we're eating we have a tea break we have uh, you know a 10 a.m break and so on so of course when you're not eating you don't have to be injecting insulin during this time mm -hmm. uh, and now when you're fasting of course you're waking up earlier for sahur yep. uh, so you need to cover yourself with insulin injection when you're eating your sahur and of ah. course during iftar when you're breaking your fast your injection has to be there yep. and then later you know we have our more after the yeah, taraweh, right. <laughs> so we also eat during that time. So insulin has to be there as well to cover your food, right. because otherwise, if you don't cover, your sugar is going to run high. Yeah, and yeah. the the sugar calculation is also very tricky, right? It's um, that is, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I've seen all of this, and I'm just like. It's such a uh, discipline. It's not a hard like we don't want to use the word hard, but it's such a discipline yes, life exactly. to live. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. Um. If you have diabetes, I mean, like uh, if you're dealing with children and adolescents, it's mm -hmm. not just the children, adolescents. Of course, their parents. They are all you know. By the time they're all well versed, they're very yep. expert. You know, mm -hmm. because they know their kids very well. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they know their kids very well, even more than the doctors. Uh, you know themselves. So uh, I mean, like over time, they'll get better. Yeah. yeah. Actually, very talking awesome. about you know discipline yeah. and all that, um, doctor. You know, like you know, we're in the fasting month, or even not in the fasting month. Is it recommended for some of the diabetic patients, uh, those who experience diabetes, to actually go like flow with their normal life? You know, exercise, going to the yeah. gym, and all. Is it actually recommended for them to do so? Yeah, I mean, like uh, even for diabetics, even during uh, if it's not Ramadan or during Ramadan, it is still recommended to maintain reasonable level of mm -hmm. activity. Uh, you know, because uh, exercise is important. Uh, you know, for uh, for our health, uh, uh, whether you're diabetic or not diabetic. Mm -hmm. But of course, uh, especially during Ramadan, uh, strenuous uh, physical activity, of course, is not really advisable, uh, especially towards the end of the fasting, maybe mm -hmm. towards uh, close time, uh, close to the time of breaking your fast. Right. Uh, so you have to kind of balance. Um, so I mean, like I, I do have um, um, uh, my children uh, at school, and then mm -hmm. some of the teachers are saying that, no, you can't do PE, you have to sit right. uh, at the bench mm -hmm. you you're not uh, uh, you, you can't uh, uh, do yeah. uh, physical activity mm -hmm. like your you own kids you can't yes, play soccer so you know that this, for yeah. the, yes yeah. that shouldn't be the way yeah. and then these children sometimes feel left out mm -hmm. um so i mean like they, they can still do physical activity but of course they have to know what to do they have to check their sugar mm -hmm. before going into activity if let's say the activity is a bit more prolonged they have maybe to take something to eat uh, so mm -hmm. that they don't go into hypo and like you said there are some professional uh, sportsmen sportswomen who are 
uh, diabetic yeah. uh, type 1 diabetes and they're doing well yeah. don't you they win olympics and so on yeah, just driving, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. like you said at the other day it's not i mean it's a lifelong disease yes, but it yeah. is not something that's not manageable right yeah um we are actually running out of time a little bit yeah. before we go any last piece of advice any last words any and also if you can maybe tell yeah. the audience at home if they have any questions like how they can reach out mm -hmm. to you yeah. yeah, okay, thank you. So, uh, my advice is um, uh, uh, if, let's say, during Ramadan, of course, uh, maybe they should be doing more frequent blood sugar monitoring mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that their sugar is better and uh, hopefully that will ensure safe fasting in all our diabetic patients, not just during uh, fasting. Of course, before fasting is also important uh, to make sure that they go into Ramadan safely and if, let's say, they're not well, they become hypoglycemic, mm -hmm. uh, don't hesitate, don't force yourself to keep on fasting. So, you know, that can be detrimental. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, don't force yourself. If, let's say, you, you're becoming hypoglycemic, just break your fast. Don't, uh, don't yeah. worry about it. And happy, happy fasting, everyone. Exactly. <laughs> fast safely, fast smartly. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, I love the advice that you give, like, <laughs> to try out fasting a couple of days before the month of Ramadan, because I never, I never thought of actually doing that, right? Yeah, yeah. Fast yeah. Do a trial. Yeah. So imagine, you know, the next year something could change. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Your body could not tolerate it. Imagine. Exactly, exactly. So thank you again, Prof. Uh, how do we reach you? Oh, yeah. Uh, if yeah. you want to, you know, get yes, to know yes, you. Yes, yes, yes. We are in UITM Private Special Centre in Sungabulo. So uh, so you can reach us there. You can make appointments to see one of our, our doctors there. All right. Yeah. Thank you so thank much you, uh, for coming on the show again and, you know, shedding a clearer light on, you know, diabetes and how uh, it actually, again, it's not uh, not a non-livable life. You just have to be disciplined. Make sure you guys uh, watch your blood sugar level. And actually, uh, to those of you guys who know people with diabetes, be alert as well. You see them like, you know, start going flaily, you know, they're, they're not uh, mm -hmm. up to par. They're like, oh, I'm going to fade. That's when, go just get them the, the, the eye bundle and go and get them care. <laughs> <laughs> Feed right. the sugar, they need it then and there. I tabu, our producer saying I tabu, so go ahead. Uh, but again, you know, happy fasting, stay fasting to those of you who are right. diabetic. If you guys have any tips, again, tag us on our social media. We are freshbrew underscore RTM.